Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janavala Givarai Gopi Janavala Givarai Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Nandana Yashoda Nandana Braja Jana Nandana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Rukmini Dwarkadish, Rukmini Dwarkadish, Rukmini Dwarkadish, Rukmini Dwarkadish. Jaya Jagana, Jaya Jagana, Jaya Baladeva, Jaya Subhadra. Jaya Gorani Thai, Gorani Thai, Gorani Thai, Jaya Gorani Thai. Nithai Gor, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Hari Bol, Gor Hari Bol. Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Jaya Prabhupada Jaya Jaya Prabhupada 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 Sri La Prabhupada Gaur Premanandi Hari Om Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Padavrajak Acharya Asitari Sata Sri Shiman His Kam Deviti Founder Acharya His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktanath Swami Maharaj Prabhupad Ki Jai Nitya Lila Prabhishya Om Vishnu Pad His Divine Grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur Prabhupad Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishava Rinda Ki Jai Nam Acharya Shila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sakaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittanana Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopana Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Gira Govadhan Ki Jai Shri Brajabhuma Namadam Ki Jai Shri Nabadit Mai Puridam Ki Jai Shri Lachal Jagannath Puridam Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Tulsi Devi Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai All Glories to the Samuel Devotees All Glories to the Samuel Devotees all glories to the Sambhala devotees, all glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga, glories to the Prabhupada. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narotavam Deving Sarasatim Yasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat 
For reciting the stream at Pagatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God and Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Rishi, the super most human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, who's the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashna Prayeshu Padreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavat Yatama Shloka Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki By regularly attending the Srimad Bhagavatam class and by rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving devotional service unto the personality of Godhead whose worship with transcendental songs becomes established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're continuing our reading from the first canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is chapter 8. Prayers by Queen Cook. Kunti and Parikshit saved. So Parikshit is already saved. Now we're into Queen Kunti's prayers and today's text is 19. Maya Javani Kachanam Agyadokshajam Avyayam Na Lakshase Mudha Drisha Nato Natyadharo Yata Maya Javani Kachanam Agya Dokshidam Avyam Nalakshase Mudhajisha Nato Natyadaro Yata Maya Javani Kachanam Agya Dokshidam Avyam Nalaksha se mudha jisha Nato nata jiro dat yataha Maya javani kachanam Agya dokshijam avyayam Nalaksha se mudha jisha Nato nata jiro yata Please chant Nalakshase Mudhajisha Nato Natyadaro Yataha Okay, Vaishnavis Maya Javani Kachana Agyadokshijam Avyayam Nalakshase Mudhajisha Nato na chadaro yata Maya javani kachanam Agyad okshijam avyayam 
Nalakshase Mudha Jusha Natona Chedaro Yata Synonyms Maya Deluding Javanika Curtain Achchanam Covered by Agya Ignorant Adokshajam Beyond the rage of material conception. Transcendental. Avyayam. Irreproachable. Na. Not. Lakshase. Observed. Mudhajasha. By the foolish observer. Nataha. Artist. Natyadaraha. Dressed as a player. Yatha as. Shila Prophet's translation for this verse. Being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of deluding energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer, exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. Please repeat. Being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of deluding energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. Shila Prabhupada's purport. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna affirms that Less intelligent persons mistake him to be an ordinary man like us, and thus they deride him. The same is confirmed herein by Queen Kunti. The less intelligent persons are those who rebel against the authority of the Lord. Such persons are known as Asuras. The Asuras cannot recognize the Lord's authority. When the Lord himself appears amongst us as Rama, Nursingha, Varaha, or in his original form as Krishna, he performs many wonderful acts which are humanly impossible. As we shall find in the 10th canto of this great literature, Lord Sri Krishna exhibited his humanly impossible activities even from the days of his lying on the lap of his mother. He killed the Putana witch, although she smeared her breast with poison just to kill the Lord. The Lord sucked her breast like a natural baby, and he sucked out her very life also. Similarly, he lifted the Govardhan hill, just as a boy picks up a frog's umbrella. You know what is a frog's umbrella? Mushroom. You know those big ones? And stood several days continuously just to give protection to the residents of Vrindavan. These are some of the superhuman activities of the Lord described in the authoritative Vedic literatures like the Puranas, Itihasas, histories, and Upanishads. He has delivered wonderful instructions in the shape of the Bhagavad Gita. He has shown marvelous capacities as a hero, as a householder, as a teacher, and as a renouncer. He is accepted as the Supreme Personality of Godhead by such authoritative personalities as Vyas, Devala, Asita, Narada, Madhva, Shankara, Rama Anuja, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Jiva Goswami, Vishwanath Chakravarti, Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati, and all other authorities of the line. He himself has declared as much in many places of the authentic literatures. And yet, there is a class of men with demoniac mentality who are always reluctant to accept the Lord as the supreme absolute truth. This is partially due to their poor fund of knowledge and partially due to their stubborn obstinacy which results from various misdeeds in the past and present. Such persons could not recognize Lord Sri Krishna even when he was present before them. Another difficulty is that those who depend more on their imperfect senses cannot realize him as the Supreme Lord. Such persons are like the modern scientists. They want to know everything by their experimental knowledge, but it is not possible to know the Supreme Person by imperfect experimental knowledge. He is described herein as adhokshaja, or beyond the range of experimental knowledge. All our senses are imperfect. We claim to observe everything and anything, but we must admit 
that we can observe things under certain material conditions only, which are also beyond our control. The Lord is beyond the observation of sense perception. Queen Kunti accepts this deficiency of the conditioned soul, especially of the woman class, who are less intelligent. For less intelligent men, there must be such things as temples, mosques, or churches, so that they may begin to recognize the authority of the Lord and hear about him from authorities in such holy places. For less intelligent men, this beginning of spiritual life is essential, and only foolish men decry the establishment of such places of worship, which are required to raise the standard of spiritual attributes for the mass of people. For less intelligent persons, bowing down before the authority of the Lord, as generally done in the temples, mosques, or churches, is as beneficial as it is for the advanced devotees to meditate upon him by active service. Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Jaina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtang Stapitang Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bandeya Hang Shri Guru Shri Yutapanakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishyamangscha Shri Rupam Sagajatam Sahagana Raganatan Bhutam Tang Sajivam Sadvaitam Savanutam Parijana Sayatam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Bhattangsha He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate Tapta Kancha Nagorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshri Vrishavanu Sute Devi Panamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpaturubhya Shankri Pasindhubhya Evacha Patitanang Pabhanebhyo Vaishavavya Namonamaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittananda Shri Advaita Gadad Hara Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So it's so silent in here you can hear a pin drop. Does it mean you're all being very attentive or you're all sleeping? Anyway, we'll find out. <laughs> so... We're on the second verse of Queen Kunti's marvelous prayers. Queen Kunti, I was going to say a little bit about her, but Sura said everything yesterday. Uh, who's her real father, who's her stepfather, etc. But one thing he did not mention is why she was so highly glorified, even before coming to this point of reciting these prayers. As a girl, she was already glorified for several things, and one of those was that she knew what is dharma. She understood clearly what is Dharma. Dharma, as we've heard many times, means to understand the statements made by God and to abide by them. So in other words, she was a godly person, just opposite to what's being discussed today. And the main theme in the, today's purport is intelligence. But before we speak about that, I want to go back and touch on the word irreproachable. What does that mean? If you... Look it up in the dictionary. Irreproachable means beyond criticism. If a person is irreproachable, you cannot criticize them. So obviously God, the supreme being, the source of everything, you cannot criticize God. But some people do, isn't it? People do on a regular basis. Ah, oh God, what kind of God is this? If there really is God, why doesn't he solve this problem, that problem? And they're constantly criticizing God. So they, based on proper definition in today's purport, immediately fall in the class of unintelligent. Only an unintelligent person reproaches or criticizes God. Similarly, God's representative is irreproachable, as we've discussed many, many times, but it's very, very relevant in today's society in general and in our spiritual society, Iskand in particular. If you accept someone as being God's representative, a pure representative of God, as we all should do, Srila Prabhupada, then he is irreproachable. You cannot criticize him. You cannot criticize him. So those who claim to be followers of Srila Prabhupada, but they regularly criticize him, they're not understanding completely. Their, their understanding is clouded. Just as you cannot criticize God, God is irreproachable. Similarly, God's pure representative is irreproachable beyond criticism by us by those in the conditioned state, in any state, but 
particularly when you're in a conditioned state. Conditioned state means maya javani kachana. Because of the curtain of maya, you cannot see things clearly. Maya, not this. We accept things to be what they are not. Classic example is to accept, and sometimes in dusk or dawn, you can't see clearly. You're in a country like India where there's still lots and lots of snakes. A lot fewer now than in the past, just like in the past, there were so many tigers. There was practically a tiger every square meter, every <laughs> few feet. But the British came with their guns and literally wiped them out. Literally wiped them out. So there are only a few pockets remaining. Uh, I was saying to our Yoga Maya Prabhu just before we came in this morning, because he's got this tattoo on the back of his head, of a face, human face with eyes on it. So I said, literally, you have eyes in the back of your head. So I told him that in the Sundarbans, the Sundarbans is a vast estuarial plain where the Ganges meets the Bay of Bengal in Bangladesh. So in that area, there's still a lot of, quite a few tigers, and they're, <clears throat> they're noted for being very big and very ferocious and for being man-eaters. So they try to figure out, why is this? And that's because the British didn't go so much in that area with their guns and wipe them out. So in other parts of India, they learn to fear humans, and they kind of tend to run away when humans come. But in that part, they never learned that fear. So they, regularly, they would still attack the villagers there. So at one point, the villagers came up with the intelligence scheme of putting a mask on the back of their heads, because tigers usually attack from, you know, they don't come at you generally directly. They hide, and then when you go by, they jump on you. So they put a mask on the back of their heads with eyes in it. And for a while, the tigers were baffled because they couldn't surprise them. They thought, they're looking at me, so I can't attack. But they were intelligent enough to figure it out over time. These people are not really watching. <laughs> so they started attacking them again. So, irreproachable. The pure devotee of the Lord is irreproachable. We have to understand that we cannot criticize the pure devotee of the Lord. And in my experience, those who think they can, you can't criticize them. In other words, they give themselves the right to criticize Srila Prabhupada. Why did he do this? He did that. But if you criticize, dare to criticize them, anything they say, they jump on you. They don't like that. They themselves think, they think them, themselves to be irreproachable. You can't criticize them, but they have the right to criticize Prabhupada. So if we want to go forward in our spiritual life, we really have to understand this point. Everything that we have is coming from Srila Prabhupada. In the International Society for Christian Consciousness, everything we have is coming from Srila Prabhupada. So if we think we have the right to criticize them, we're not going to go very far, very fast. It's not going to happen. We have to understand that just as God is irreproachable, his pure devotee representative is also irreproachable. And if we develop that attitude, then everything starts to fall into place. Because one has to have as much faith in the spiritual master as one has in the Supreme Lord. Yasya Devi Paramakti Tata Devi Tata Devi Tata Guru. As much faith in God in God's representative as you have in God. And the whole reason why we are here should be that we want to approach God. We want to go back to the kingdom of God. And therefore, we are willing to do what God says as we hear from God's representative. Now, the topic of intelligence. If we look in a dictionary, generally speaking, intelligence is defined as the ability to acquire and utilize knowledge and skills. Ability to acquire and utilize knowledge and skills. This is defined as intelligence. However, what is the goal of that intelligence? Why do we want to acquire knowledge and skills? Generally speaking, especially again when we're in the conditioned state, is simply for material aggrandizement. To advance or to find happiness in eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. So if you become very good at that, <clears throat> then you're considered to be intelligent. But the animals have that kind of intelligence, just like we were discussing about the tigers. They intelligently figured out it was, wasn't just some instinctive thing, because in the past, they never saw anything like that. <laughs> so they couldn't be responding to it instinctively. <laughs> they figured out. In the beginning, they were a little bit baffled. These people are looking at me, so I can't attack them. I can't sneak up on them. But they figured out, intelligently figured out over time, that no, they're not really looking. It's just, it's just a ploy. And they started attacking again. So the animals have the intelligence, how to eat, how to sleep, 
how to mate, how to defend. They don't have to go to Oxford and Harvard to, to learn that. They don't have to go there. Another way they define intelligence is to, again, utilize tools. They say, for many, many years, the scientists were saying that this is what distinguishes humans from animals. Humans can make and utilize tools. Animals can't. Lo and behold, again, another scientific theory that got thrown to the wayside. Because <laughs> when they actually started observing, they saw that many animals, and like chimpanzees, they create and utilize tools. They see some place where they're a uh, termite hill, and they want to eat the termites. How to get them? It's a very hard. If you've ever been to a termite hill, and you're from Africa, you know. They're rock hard, like cement, when they set. You can't just break into it. it you know. So the chimpanzees, they figure out, if I get a straw, and I make it thin enough that I can stick it in the hole, the termites think they're being attacked. They jump on the straw. I take the straw out and I eat them. <laughs> That's intelligence. They intelligently created a tool and utilized it, but for what purpose? Simply to eat a little more easily. So if human beings use their intelligence for that purpose, which they're, they're doing, how to create nicer dinner plates and nicer, you know, dinnerware and sharper knives for cutting them, you know. This is just like an animalistic intelligence. So what is the intelligence that's being discussed in the Bhagavatam? Because the Bhagavatam is not dealing with just the material plane of life. Bhagavatam is giving us the spiritual path, spiritual understanding. So what is that intelligence? So I just wanted to read a couple of things. Because Prophet was asked directly on many occasions. And he gave different definitions. But on this particular occasion, you'll find us in the perfect question, perfect answers. Bob Cohen, who later became uh, initiated as Brahmatir Prabhu. He asked Prophet directly, can you tell me again what intelligence is? So Prophet says, intelligence means one who knows what he is, what is this world, what is God, what are the interrelations. He is intelligent. So, very simple direct definition of intelligence. If you know who you are, if you know what this world is all about, if you know who is God, and you understand the interrelationships between those three items, then you're considered to be intelligent. So before we start getting, as we regularly do, upset about this group being called unintelligent or that group or that, first of all, we have to see, are we intelligent? <laughs> if I'm not intelligent, how can I gauge other people's intelligence? So when we hear a definition of intelligence, we have to immediately apply it to ourselves. So do I know who I am? First category. Do I know what this world is all about? Do I know who God is? And do I understand the interrelationships between those three categories? So first of all, apply to yourself. Before you get upset about some group being called unintelligent. Of course, in his purport, Prophet says that those who decry God or defy God, they're unintelligent. So that implies broadly to almost everybody in this material world. We're not here necessarily to discover God. We don't want, actually. Because if we recognize that there is a supreme being then we immediately recognize that we are subordinate and we're supposed to serve, and we don't want that. Our idea, and Prophet discusses at length in another purport, I believe this was in the fourth canton in, in the Puranjan story. So Prophet was saying that, no, actually this was from a lecture. Prophet was saying that people don't want to become servant of God because our uh, experience of service in the material world is negative. It's negative. Service means I have a master who's telling me what to do. I don't necessarily like the situation, etc., etc. I might feel exploited. But service to God is not like that. The pure servant of God is not feeling exploited. It's not feeling downtrodden. Not feeling those kind of feelings. The servant of God is feeling rather the highest ecstasy. The highest ecstasy. And therefore, we see that even the expansions of God have this mood of service towards God. Krishna's expansions, beginning with Balaram, they all have this mood of service to Krishna because that is the highest ecstatic position to be in. Just the opposite of when we're in the material world. To be a servant in the material world, you feel downtrodden, you feel exploited. It's not a happy situation. So therefore, when we come to spiritual life and we hear again, service, servant, it's like our immediate reaction is, we don't like it. <laughs> we don't like it. So, we have to be convinced by hearing and gradually by experience that service to God 
is a wonderful thing, wonderful category, wonderful experience. And then, again, then we're not so uptight about surrendering more and more. These beginning symptoms of surrender, as Srila Bhaktivedanta Thakur explains to us, is to accept everything favorable for devotional service and reject everything that's unfavorable. So this is one of the uses of intelligence, to discern clearly what is to be done and what is not to be done in any particular situation, whether material or spiritual. That is the role of the intelligence. To discern what is to be done and what is not to be done. So we're being trained, after being mistrained for so many millions of lives, times, how to use the intelligence materially. Generally speaking, if you're not insane, you're propelled by desires to be happy. So we want to use our intelligence how to discern what is a happy situation and to avoid those situations that are not happy. In a spiritual training camp, we are being trained how to, again, discern what is favorable for advancement in devotional service and to avoid that which is unfavorable for advancement in devotional service. So that is open for everyone. That is open for everyone, regardless of health, wealth, sex, race, former creed. It doesn't matter where you, which camp you're coming from. Everyone can be trained how to discern what is favorable for advancement in devotional service and what is unfavorable. And this is what the pure representative Krishna does for us. Whether we had the good fortune of seeing him face to face like Bob Cohen, Brahma Tirtha, or we are hearing by reading his books, we are being trained how to accept everything favorable for devotional service and how to avoid that which is unfavorable. How to come to the full realization of who we are how to come to full realization of God and become God conscious. And how to see this Maya for what it really is. Maya Java Nikachanam. In the previous verse, she explained, Kunti Devi, that Krishna is Antar Bahir of Ashutam. He's inside of everything and outside of everything. But those who are foolish, Agya, they cannot see this. Namase Purusham Twaryam Ishwaram Prakate Param. Nalaksha Sarvabhutanam. Antarba here Vashutam. If you're agya, if you're not intelligent, if you're not trained, you cannot see God, even though God is inside of everything and outside of everything. And then she explains further in today's verse. Maya Java Nikachanam Agya Dokshanam Avyam. Again, Avyam, irreproachable. Nalaksha say Muda Ajusha. Nato na tero yataha. Just as an actor. Dressed as a player, with most of us have been to dramas in our life, we've seen. And you may know the lead actor, actress, whomever, but because they're dressed differently and they're so um, convincing in their role that they're playing, whether it's, you know, some Shakespeare player or whatever, but they've assumed a role that is not their normal position, but they're playing it so nicely that you don't recognize that. It's, as Prophet said, sometimes it could be your father sometimes playing a role that you don't recognize because. So in the case of Krishna, he is the Supreme Father, but we don't recognize him. Because when he comes in this world, as Prophet said in today's purport, even in front of you, because you're ignorant or demoniac, you don't see him. You don't see him as God. So, so many had that experience when Krishna was here 5,000 years ago. They were in front of Krishna. They saw Krishna, but instead of surrendering to Krishna and serving Krishna, they fought against Krishna. <laughs> so it's not about just seeing God. If you are not properly trained, even if God appears before you, you're not going to interact with him properly. The classic story is told of the boatmen. In the old days, you know, they would be, they had, there were canals and they would have human beings, boatmen, pulling the boat up the canal, the barge. So he's walking along the bank and sometimes there's prickles and stuff. And so he's praying to God to please help him. And God appears. And what do you want? I want some nice shoes so that as I walk along the bank, I don't get pricked in one. <laughs> God, the supreme being who can give anything, liberation, wealth, whatever you want. This foolish boatman, he just wanted a pair of shoes. So when he walks along the bank, he doesn't get pricked. 
So this is less intelligent. So even if, if we're not intelligent, if we're not trained in who we are, who is God, what is the material situation, how to get out of it, then even if God appears before us, we're going to ask for the wrong thing. Or the story of the old lady. In India still, people go into the forest to collect wood for cooking and heating and whatnot. So the old lady went to the forest to collect wood. And so many other ladies were there. And the system is they help each other to get the bundle on the head. Huge, heavy bundle, but the ones that's on the head, they're very balanced and they can walk. So her bundle was put on her head. But because she was old, she fell behind everybody else and they all went ahead. And at one point, she heard a sound and she thought maybe it's a wild animal. And she got startled and the bundle fell. What to do? She's praying, oh my Lord, my dear Lord, please help. So again, Krishna appears because he's very kind. Yes, mother, what do you want? Please help me put this bundle back on my head. <laughs> so Papa said, the foolish conditioned souls are like that. We are being burdened by our material desires. Either the burden of wanting something and the burden of having that thing once we get it. And we pray in that burdensome situation to Krishna, God, please help. And then when God comes, we ask him to put the burden back on our head. In other words, give us more sense gratification. The sense gratification is our burden that's holding us in this material world. And we go to God and we pray for more sense gratification. More realization of our desires, material desires. So this is foolish. So intelligence again, as proper clearly defined to Brahmatirtha, to know who you are, to know who is God, to know what is this world, and the interrelationship between the three. So we can judge ourselves. Are we intelligent? And we can judge others. Are they intelligent? So there's a lot more can be said. Actually, you could give a seminar in today's verse and purport, but time is not permitting. So we'll stop here if there's any question, comment. Yes. on a play like a good actor and <clears throat> become drawn into his pastimes. And yeah, well, the thing is, we're all acting on the material platform. We're all acting. Uh, we're thinking that we are something that we're not, this material body. And based on that, we assume so many roles as father, son, husband, wife, master, servant, etc. These are all just roles that the living entity is playing. And Kunti, Queen Kunti, knows this very well. As she will go on to say, one of the um, symptoms that one is intelligent <clears throat> is that one becomes humble. Because one realizes, I'm just an insignificant jiva amongst unlimited jivas. What, <laughs> how can I stand out in any way? So in the next verse, she will show her humility. Tata, she takes the humble position. Even though she's Krishna's aunt materially and she has so much direct experience with Krishna, she's not puffed up. She's saying that you are actually meant for the Paramahamsas. Tata Paramahamsana, Muninam, the Munis. Amalatmanam, the spotless Bhaktas. She says, Katam Pashema Histriya. How can we women know you? You know, again, taking the humble position. And Krishna says in the uh, Bhagavad Gita that the first symptom of knowledge is amanitam, adambitam, humility, pridelessness. So again, we can judge ourselves. If we're being proud and puffed up, then we know we should know right away. I'm, not, I'm being unintelligent. And when we meet somebody, if they're being proud and puffed up, we know right away we're not dealing with an intelligent person. Because the beginning of intelligence is humility. And again, it's not false humility being beaten down. No, it's understanding clearly like Kunti does. She shows from the very verse that she knows who God is, who Krishna is. So she's not being dumb by being humble. She's not being, you know, necessarily falsely. No, you're not being beaten down. It's an intelligent situation, intelligent position to take, to be humble. Understanding I'm dealing with the supreme, unlimitedly intelligent, unlimitedly strong, unlimitedly wealthy. There is no comparison between the jiva and Krishna. So for Ajiva to puff 
himself or herself up thinking that I'm something wonderful, this and that. It's foolish. It's not intelligent. So humility is the beginning of real intelligence. When we become humbled, unfortunately, quite often, the material energy beats us down into a so-called humble position. But then when the tide turns, which it usually does, and that's why I brought up that question to Mother Devaki when she was here, that it's easier, it seems, and it definitely is for most of us, to be God-conscious when we're in a beaten-down position, when it's obvious your health is down, your wealth is non-existent, Christian's taking it all away, everything is against you. Then naturally, if you're a little bit pious, you turn to God and you pray to God. But the other extreme is much more difficult to deal with. When everything is going nice, I have money like anything in the bank. And I have prestige and position and everybody's looking up to me and people think I'm intelligent. I have PhD, sometimes two PhDs. And then you become bewildered by all of that. And so Christian, so Kunti will also deal with that in her prayers. That is very difficult for those who have John Maishwara Shuta Shibi, Edamanak Barakpana. When you have all of that, high birth and parentage and you know money and all that, it's very difficult to feelingly call out to Krishna because you're puffed up by all, not understanding that it all belongs to Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Gnantarashimil Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Bhakta Prindar.